All right, we're here with Ryan Brown, who started out uh, as an actor and has now transitioned over to a published author. Why don't you give us a little background of when you started acting and came here to New York? Uh, I moved here um, right after college in 99 and uh, uh, to be an actor and um, got here, spent a few months in, in, in acting classes and everything, got into a uh, a few plays with friends, you know, with friends, we would put put plays on and uh, and put them up. And fortunately, through that, I got an agent um, pretty quickly, and and I was very lucky. I, not long after I got the agent, she sent me out for uh, for the role on Guiding Light, and uh, managed to book that. And so slid into that pretty quickly, and uh, and that took that was three years, was a three year contract. And then after Young and the Restless, you headed out west, right? This was Guiding Light, actually. Oh, sorry, Guiding yeah. Light, sorry. Yeah. Uh, did you that, headed out to Young and the Restless. Headed out, yes. Not ac did, I moved to L.A. not actually to, uh, to to do Young and the Restless. I just I had finished my contract with um, Guiding Light and just wanted to, to try L.A., see what was out there. There were a lot of people doing it at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I sort of went out there and started over. Um, didn't really know anybody. Had to. Uh, I had a, at the time my my agent was just an East Coast agent, so I had to go shopping agents again. Fortunately, was able to to do that. And then again, this this role came up. I've, I've been lucky in that uh, both of the parts that I was doing on shows, I was filling in, uh, taking over roles and sort of trying to mix them with a with a family and a specific look. And I think the blonde hair and the blue eyes helped me out a little right. bit. Um, so I was lucky enough to uh, to join the cast of, of Young and Restless. And then after that, what what did you do? Well, it was during I, I started writing while I was still on Young and the Restless. Just you know, it's with the job you only work a couple of days a week. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes you'll have a week or two off. So I had some time on my hands and um, looking for another creative outlet. And I literally sat down, had a had an idea, a story idea in my head, and, and thought, well, let's just go with it. I lose nothing, it doesn't cost anything yeah. to sit down and try and write something. Um, so I sat, sat down, wrote 10 pages of this thing that turned into 20, turned into 50, turned into about 530 pages or something. Uh, it was a manuscript that I wasn't able to sell, but I did see it through and, and, and got through with it. And I, you know, in the process of, of trying to sell that, I sat down and wrote my second book, and that was one that I that was quite yet unfortunately able to sell. And, yourself creatively and help you in your acting or did you yeah I, th I mean they definitely they, they definitely feed off of each other I mean whether whether you're you're acting or writing fiction you're creating characters and, and I think um, everything pretty much starts with me with character with my writing I definitely start with character before plot um, and it's it's developing I think they uh, I think they, they fed off of other. I studied filmmaking in college where I was actually studying to direct, so I think all of these things sort of yeah. conspired. Um, but yeah, you use a lot of the same muscles, a lot of the same tools. Are you interested in pursuing any uh, directing or? You know, it's it's one of those things that I haven't got I haven't Not gotten to. around to it yet. I really yeah. thought that that was what I was going to start with, and uh -huh. it ended up being the the, uh, the thing that I'm yet to to do. But you never say never. It's uh, you know at the time. This kind of dates myself, and it doesn't seem that long ago. But when I was in film school, we were we were still splicing film with razor blades and taping them up, and everything. I hadn't even heard of digital editing right. and everything. And of course, now all the stuff that you can do with a laptop and, uh, and a phone, like you're using right now, uh, it makes it a lot easier. You can do a whole lot more stuff than you could. So yeah, I would definitely like to uh, to pursue it again sometime, even if it's just as a hobby, and see where it goes. And now, what are you currently working on? Are you Strictly um, writing, or uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really just writing right now. Doing not not really doing any acting at, at the moment. Uh, working on a third uh, book, third novel, and um, just sort of getting my teeth into it. I'm a, you know about a third of the way into a first draft right now. So. And now, what advice would you have to people who are just starting out, whether they be acting or just pursuing a career as an author? Well, with with both of them, I think you can do so much more on your own now than than ever. And so I would say, even before you, you know, at the time that I started out it was in, in writing and acting, it was, you know, get an agent, get somebody that's representing you and everything. And now I think it's it, it's almost better to come up with a product and then 
and put it out there and have something to sell that agents or publishers or producers or whoever, distributors, whatever you're doing, have the product first and you can do it. Uh, it costs nothing to write, you can even self-publish these days. Uh, the publishing industry is going through a, a big, uh, you know, uh, revolution right now. Nobody's quite sure where it's going, but uh, there are a lot of options where you can self-publish with filmmaking and, um, and, and acting. If you're an actor, go out and make a film. It costs you virtually nothing. So I would say learn them all. Um, I think whether you're going to be a writer, director, or an actor, I think it's good to learn to write. Uh, I, think, I think that's a, a good basis for anything. I would say that to anybody. Um, but create your create your material and then have have a product to sell and go out and take it. Cool, thank you so much. So your first book is Play Dead? This is my first book, Play Dead. It came out um, a couple of years ago, 2009. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's about a high school football team uh, that uh, actually takes place in small town in East Texas, fictional town where there's a, a vicious football rivalry and uh, one of the teams sabotages the team bus of, the, of their opposition on the way to the game and uh, the entire team ends up dying, come back from the dead and have to win the district championship uh, in order to save their souls. So uh, a lot of supernatural. Um, differs from most zombie books in that the zombies are actually the good guys in, in this story. They're the, uh -huh. the team that you pull for. Um, and now, your, what was your second book was called? The second book was called Thought Out and Fed Up. Uh, came out uh, last year in 2011. And sort of what I tried to do with the zombie story, sort of turn it on its ear a little bit with the comedy I've done with the classic western. It actually takes place in modern day. But uh, it's a story in which we have John Wayne back from the dead. We find out that John Wayne wasn't actually buried when he died in 79, but uh, had himself frozen. And he was in a cryogenic chamber, which was flying in an airplane across Texas. The plane then crashes. John Wayne pops up in real life, almost like a Frankenstein monster comes to life, and uh, winds up in a, in a small Texas town. And now you, you said uh, both, the, well, at least your second book is a little comedy based. You didn't get to do that when you were acting on the soaps. Do you no. feel like that was a, a nice yeah, outlet no, for you? Yeah, I enjoy that. It's 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 fun. And what they what they always say, I think, as a writer and an actor, comedy in many ways is a lot harder. Yeah. Uh, 